What's up peeps? In today's video, I'm going to be bringing you my top 11 painting tools for beginning decorative painters. I've been a faux finisher for quite a while, in fact somewhere close to 20 years at this point. But in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can get over 17 different faux finishes just using these 11 paint tools. So if you're into learning about faux finishing, decorative painting, or how you can incorporate that into your furniture refinishing, then just stick around. The number one tool on my list is going to be a synthetic angled paintbrush. Let's open these up. Now, I'm a purdy girl, and I know that there are tons of different brands on the market, but I do love my purdies because some of these brushes I've had for a very long time, close to 20 years. In fact, this brush I have had for 20 years. This was my first ever angled purdy, and it has so many special memories, as you can see by all of the stuff that's all over the handle. I only use this brush for pouncing now because the bristles, I don't know if you can see that, but they are completely destroyed at this point. Just using angled brushes can give you some of the best wood graining that you have ever seen. You don't need tons of specialty tools to do really cool wood grain. I actually recently did a hickory top on my dressers and for that entire project, I used this brush right here. The cool thing about the angled bristles is that when you push down on the back of it, it splays out. That allows you to get some of that like open graining vibes and once you get glaze or paint or anything on these bristles, and maybe when you've used it for a little while but less time than that pouncer I had there, you're gonna be able to pull and drag lines out of this just by using different pressures. It's actually super fun to do wood graining with an angled brush. And as you saw when I first took them out, I actually keep the sleeves. I have had, again, these brushes for a very long time and keeping the brush in the sleeve actually helps to keep the bristles together. So you won't get that splayed out look if that's what you're going for, then that's what you should do for sure. But if you wanna keep your brushes in really good tight working order with super crisp angled lines, try to keep them in the original sleeves that they came in. The next tool that I can't live without is another brush. This is a wallpaper paste brush. If you can see it here, these bristles are synthetic. They're also a little bit thick, which really helps to drag graining lines. I've actually used this wallpaper paste brush to do everything from grass cloth to strie to denim. The thickness of the bristle is really what comes into play here because I do have a lot of specifically made for faux finishing graining brushes, but nothing that will actually pull this much out and be a good stiff bristle. Sometimes when you're pulling something like a strie or a grass cloth, you wanna make sure that things are coming down super straight and even, and sometimes with the softer brushes, you can get things moving around. Next up on my favorites list are these foam brushes. I have these in all manner of different sizes. These are great for glazing. In fact, I do have a few here that maybe you can see have been super well loved, but I like that because they get a little floppier and you're able to, once they're soaked with glaze, you're able to really push glaze into crevices and little nooks and crannies. The number one thing I love to use these for is in wood graining and you can just load it up and then drag it across when you're doing your final toning glaze. Next up, you can probably guess, chip brushes. These might actually be the top paintbrush tool that I have in my kit, period. 
Most people think that these are disposable, but I've actually had these two chip brushes since I started faux finishing. If you take care of your tools, they will last significantly longer than you think they would. Don't get me wrong, these are great for disposable things like paint stripper and um, plasters and stuff like that. Chip brushes can help you get just about any faux finish, either started or finished. Wood graining, strie, grass cloth, different pounced glaze, metal, stone and brick, leather, and even stripes, depending on the final look that you're going for. This four incher is one of my favorites for wood grain. It's also one of my favorites for grass cloth. These bristles are also stiff, sort of like the wallpaper paste brush, but because they're so tightly packed and so much smaller than that wallpaper brush, you're gonna get much tighter graining, and uh, for grass cloth, these work out so great. Hopefully the audio doesn't completely suck right now, and I apologize if it totally does, but unfortunately, Mr. CC DIY is getting ready for work, and I work in the garage, and that's where our water heater is, and that's the loud, weird, uh, tornado-like sound that you probably hear in the background, so please allow me to apologize for that. The fifth tool on my list is maybe gonna seem a little bit weird, but this is one of those things that if you're a decorative painter, maybe even just a painter in general, you absolutely need to have in your kit. And that is a hair dryer. Now, I don't use this thing usually on hot. Um, when you use it on hot, you can get some cracking in your top coats, your finishes, if you speed dry certain things. But this particular hair dryer actually has a cool setting that can help just push air across your finish to help dry it quicker or at least give you a skin on the top of your finish which will help you do your next layer that you need to do a little bit quicker but without the risk of actually cracking back your finish definitely recommend having a hair dryer in your kit The next tool that you must have at least one of in your kit are sponges. I've got everything here from sea sponges to just regular old car washing sponges and I have about 15 other types of sponges in my faux finishing stuff but you know a girl can only hold so many pieces of something at once. I use these for just about everything. This is great for glazing. They're terrific for getting into corners. I have some teeny, teeny, tinies here that you can just really get right into the corner. If you're doing like grungy finishes or something with multiple layers, having some damp sea sponges on hand is a great investment. I've also done iron finishes and rusted iron finishes and primarily used these car wash sponges that I just cut up into four or six pieces. You can really saturate these well and they'll hold water really nicely. They'll also hold paint really nicely and they also distribute that paint really nicely. These are cool for glazing. They're cool for things like leather, um, granite, and other stone like brick or uh, tumble tile, which by the way, if you are subscribed, you're gonna see me work on some tumble tile in the very near future. I think that video is coming up in a couple of videos. So if you're not subscribed, this is the time to click on that button down below, get yourself subscribed, and that way you're not gonna miss it. And to wrap up on brushes at this time, there are so many different kinds of brushes, but to wrap up on brushes for the beginning painting tools, get yourself a really good set of artist brushes. These are called Jerry Q, and I've had these for probably about five years now, and they get pretty consistent use. They have held up amazing. You can see that there's barely any splaying on the sides of the brush, and you can also see that there's a ton of different sizes and shapes. This is just gonna help you get into corners. It's gonna help you do certain finishes. Um, I did do a driftwood effect recently and I used so many of these artist brushes 
putting knots together, uh, dragging the lines that are the darker crack lines in the driftwood effect. You can also do things like murals and having a really decent set of artist brushes will help you to just define and refine all of those small details. That can really add an enormous amount of technique and skill that other people may or may not have. And that decorative painting can translate right over to furniture or even like the walls in your own house. Or if you want to start getting into some client work, murals are an awesome way to go. The next tool on the list I literally couldn't live without in my job piles and piles of microfiber rags. These are great for literally everything. I use them to clean, I use them to wipe down, I use them to dry my hands at the sink. I even use them to wipe glaze off of paintbrushes. This one in particular, you can kind of see is pretty crusty. But the great thing about these microfiber rags, they are machine washable. They rinse out great, and I've had these for quite a while. They last, and I love that. If you've been watching my channel for a while, then the next tool I'm gonna talk about will be absolutely zero shock to anybody. I know I've said this a few times in this video already, but this might actually be my most invaluable tool because I use them for pretty much everything. That's Japan scrapers. I use these to scrape back finishes to do distressing. I use them to add finishes such as plaster, even glaze, which is really cool, joint compound. They are invaluable tools for scraping off stickers from the thrift store. I use them to scrape up gross nastiness as well when I'm cleaning. These are also great if you want to do some stone and um, brick type finishes, as well as stuff like leather. Once you get the hang of how to hold one of these Japan scrapers and how to really manipulate product off of the end of the scraper itself, you will find that you use these for more things than I could probably even include in this video. A tool that probably doesn't get quite enough attention would be a level. This one is a 24 incher and it's come in handy a lot of times. In fact, if you already saw my little clip of the tumble tile that I'm going to be working on, this tool was the number one tool that I needed while doing that project. Levels will come in handy for anything where you need actual, accurate, straight lines, but this particular level also has my favorite thing, which is this 45 degree level. Let's see if I can get a level. Almost. <laughs> it's got a level, it's got a plum, and it's got this 45 degree. This is a terrific tool to just have on hand. You never really know when you're gonna need something like this. And if you wanna incorporate things like angled finishes, such as, like I said, tumble tile, brick, um, other stone work, anything that you're gonna be doing that needs some straight lines, this is your key. Now, before we get to the 11th and my most necessary tool that you will need in order to do decorative painting, I'd like to give a few honorable mentions. First up, this wood graining tool set. Not just for wood graining, but this can come in handy for all kinds of stuff. I especially use the triangle for just about everything. You can probably, hopefully, see there on this graining comb that there are three different graining types. Teeny, teeny, tinies, slightly bigger, and a rounded, but also flexible line. These will come in handy for just about anything. You can just scrape through paint. You can make fun, cool looks with it. You can do wood graining with these. They're invaluable in things like murals as well. 
definitely recommend picking up one of these sets. And each of the graining tools also has some spikies, also some good chunky looking ones. Both of these have that too. Hopefully that comes out on camera. I don't always use the grainers, but they do also come in handy sometimes, depending on the type of wood grain that you're actually doing. And for my glazing fans out there, another tool that you're gonna wanna have a little bit of on hand is cheesecloth. Cheesecloth is really good for things like glazing, especially if you wanna get some old world effects where you have some uh, multi, uh, level, <laughs> multi-layered plaster type finishes, cheesecloth will really get down into those areas and just sort of distribute that glaze very evenly. Also in a pinch, you can use cheesecloth to buff out wax. This stuff is highly recommended just as a cool tool to have on hand. Next honorable mention, yep, a standard old toothbrush. I love this for things like working on iron, um, rusted, pitted things, copper, patinaed copper. This is super great because you can get a different flick off of these bristles than you can an artist brush. Coating it and then just flicking, flicking, flicking. Well, you can see some dust on there. Haven't used this in a hot minute, <laughs> but that's okay. You can use it upside down, you can use it sideways, and you also can just use it try by the way to use a new one i don't recommend taking one that you've had in your mouth and then using it in your finishes ew but these are a great tool to just have on hand and all of this is obviously in addition to all of like the normal daily tools that you should probably have in your kit in order to really get some good solid finishes complete things like sanders and sandpaper utility blades, a speed square, which also, by the way, will give you that 45 degrees, so you don't have to have that level if you have a speed square. You've got that already. Not to mention things like PPE, which I have a nice pair of goggles that come around the side. You just never know when you're gonna be using tools or things are happening above your head or whatnot, definitely protecting your eyes plus obviously a respirator, and I have two different kinds of cartridges, one for fumes, such as paints and things like that, and the other is for small particulates. When you're sanding something, you just don't wanna be breathing that in, and a lot of decorative finishes include things like plasters um, or other really small particulate matter that you obviously do not wanna be bringing into your lungs, so PPE, way up there on the list of needs. I know I've said it a lot of times already in this video, but there are tons of tools that you could purchase. However, the number one top tool that you can actually use in decorative painting, especially as a beginning finisher, right here. You've got 10 digits, you've got two palms, you've got knuckles, you've got nails, you've got all kinds of cool tools right here on your hands. I can't tell you how many times I just use my fingers to push something in or to take something off or to scratch, scratch, scratch. Your hands are definitely your number one tool. Anyway, that wraps up this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, I would love if you gave it a thumbs up. That's right down below. Also next to that is the subscribe button, which you can feel free to click if you haven't done that yet. Join our little fun time party over here and learn even more about decorative painting, faux finishing, furniture refinishing, and makeovers. You can also pop over to my community tab. That's a great place for us to actually chat because we can go back and forth and it's just so much more fun than trying to do that like on videos. But if you want to reach out to me in private, feel free to follow me over on Instagram. I'm at Copper Cactus DIY, and you can DM me with any questions. I love to answer questions, and I love to share the love of faux finishing because, I don't know, I just feel like it's something that's super fun that can really up 
the level of your furniture pieces or your home in general. But even though that ends this video, I would be super happy to do a part two for anybody who would like maybe like more intermediate tools, more specialty items that could really like up your game in faux finishing. Please leave me a comment below and let me know if that's something that you'd be into seeing. But that's all I've got for you in this video. So yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Hope that this was informative and something that you can take into your own finishing work and up your game a little bit. Thank you as always so much for being here and watching. I really, really appreciate that you enjoy what I do. This is my lifeblood and um, I really appreciate you being along for the ride. So later peeps. This is really good with the going through the whole thing part. Just get through it at least once. Okay. <clears throat> Game off. You can get finishes. Oh, I'm gonna have to face the camera. Okay, so directionally for the voice. If I didn't use this and that, then I'm cutting all of this part out anyway. Okay, you can come in with your, um, yeah, words. You can come in with your brush. It's totally sticking out the whole time, probably, right? <laughs> Seems right. Okay, and what else am I saying here? What else am I saying?